Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we are speaking with Pinar Caprali. Hey, Pinar, how are you? Great. Happy to be here. Uh, it's great to have you on the show, Pinar. Pinar is the co-founder and head of product and data at Pensa Systems. Uh, Pensa is a really interesting company in the retail space. They're a leading innovator in changing the way brands and retailers manage retail shelf inventory. And we'll get more into how their technology uses artificial intelligence to support that exercise. But before we get there, Pinar, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your career. Uh, that's the hardest part to talk about myself. But one of the <laughs> things that, you know, I, um, I'm i always, I'm more of a future person. So whatever happens is in the past, You the successes, you enjoy your failures, you learn from and you look forward. And that I think made me the entrepreneur I am. And it's a big core component of being an entrepreneur is really learning and looking forward. So in a very nutshell, I started out my career as a software engineer. I studied computer science in the US, but pretty quickly I moved on to um, more management and then set up um, my own companies. And it's been all about technology and where technology me meets consumer needs with, um, you know, a lot of it was initially I set up the first internet serv service provider company in Turkey with a partner and then more finance. And now um, for the past three, four years, it's Pensa, which is ah. my passion. So let's talk about Pensa, which uh, Pinar, I love the name Pensa yeah. and what you guys are doing there. So at Pensa, um, we started out by looking at the retail industry. And I think it's a it's a, of course, it's a very big part of our lives. And personally, as a shopper, um, I love shopping and it's been very frustrating to like even either online or physical stores, not to be able to find the right product quickly. I don't like to spend my time looking for things. I like to spend it buying things actually, which is probably a dream uh, for our brands. But um, so what we saw was there was a lot of, um, automation that was uh, that had already taken place at the point where like the inventory what goes into stores and also there's a lot of um, already you know great technology at point of sales mm -hmm. so what was really um, not tech or was dark not visible to um, to all parties was actually the shelf where the customer is looking at and making her or his decision to purchase something. So we call that point of purchase. And that's what we thought that we would like to shine the light on. And so Excellent. make it visible. And one of- Well, the I, I can tell you like uh, living in this world that we all find ourselves in right now, it, you can see that retailers are really struggling with managing their shelves. And it really seems to be a, a tough point for them. Yeah, and there are a few factors. One of them is COVID and supply chain. And I think I'm very passionate about that making, I think that's like, you know, we're part of a puzzle that makes our world a better world. But it's also, there are other changes that took place like omni-channel, where it's not just the end consumer that's picking up from the shelf, they're the pickers who are picking from the shelf. So it's a very different world right now. And patterns from the past do not apply, which is why real time right now, digitized data um, of the shelf is very important to um, go forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tell me a little bit about some of the trends that you are seeing more broadly in that retail space. It, it does seem like uh, certainly the e-commerce elements have become so critical over the last couple of years. But I mean, uh, based on my my trip to Walmart last weekend, uh, <laughs> people are still pouring into these these stores. And they will. It, yeah. It's a very social thing and we don't have time for it, but it is. It's actually like from very, you know, antique times that it's it's a way to socialize as well. It's an interaction place. So I think there will always be a good, important footprint in terms of groceries in other stores or Walmarts. But how we interact there is changing. 
we we're you know they're just think you know 20 years ago there was probably 30 percent of the number of products that now we see at stores so we have to display differently be more optimized about how we um arrange our shops and that's that's very important it will be always a but it's multimodal interaction that people have. You know, right now we have it by um, by online pickup in store. I think we might have other things where, like, you know, we'll have the reverse and it will be multimodal, where like you go into the store, you like something, and then you order it and it gets sent. It's like there's always this physical mm. element that where you want to touch, and I do that actually in more expensive stuff where I go to a clothing store, I try things and I get them sent. It's right. easier to buy it online. So it's, it's going to be very multi-model in all directions. And that's one part of it. It will never go away. It will just become different, just change, like everything changes. The other part is we are a global world now. And I think COVID just really made us realize, like, I was wondering, it's just like, so the chip crisis in China, why does it affect my crackers in the United States, right? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> what's the relation? Like, I can understand phones. I can understand cars. But then an industry lead explained it to me. Like he's like, you know, those crackers are being built by machines who have chips. Mm. They have to be, you know, maintained. It's like so it's it's a very, very global world. So we have to be also maybe um less spoiled that we don't like, you know, I don't have to have the cracker with the brie and the salt from Himalayas. It's just like that skew proliferation, I think, is a thing of the past will have less choices, but still a variety for yeah. the ones that count. So and I that's think those such are an interesting, like that. that's, that's a real shift too, I would say for mm -hmm. CPGs, right? Because one of the ways that they have tried to make themselves a little bit more appealing to retailers is they're always offering the new the new biscuit flavor or the new soda flavor, right? Just so that they get a little bit more uh, shelf space. Well, yeah, and it got a little bit crazy. And I think this sort of had a reset and it's, I think they came sort of, they might have coincided. And what I see is the younger generation. I always love the younger generation and how they're approaching the world. Like people who are like in their twenties to thirties, they're, they'll, their work-life balance is much better than previous generations. They're in simpler things. They're into sustainability. Yeah. So those trends also, I think, um, sort of dovetailed with what COVID brought maybe a little quicker because, you know, you can't manufacture and ship everything around as easily as you could two or three years ago. So I'm going to jump back onto a topic that I, I'm a little passionate about, which is artificial intelligence or machine yeah. learning. And, you know, you have a computer science background. I'm excited to hear how you guys employ machine learning to help out retailers. Well, a couple of things. First of all, we digitize the shelf using deep learning computer vision algorithms. That's very much bleeding edge AI. And we actually have our patents there. Um, some granted, some of course still in process. So our big AI is basically being able to recognize down to the SKU product level, anything that we see on the shelf, which oh, is about a hundred thousand different things. So it's one thing and that's our uh, big core AI technology. We also have machine learning and algorithmic you know, data modeling for demand forecasting. How do we forecast it? Given the shelf is now this way, how will that affect my demand so that manufacturers can actually manufacture more optimally or loss of sales? So like a lot of um, data with learning. And um, another one that we're big on with um, our machine learning is we actually understand what the shelves are being managed to and what they should be. What happens in retail is there's a plan that gets right. made in the quarters, headquarters at the beginning of the year. And by the time it gets down to the stores and there's you know, over a few months, it becomes something very different. So right. we actually, by watching the shelves and using our AI, we do understand what that store specifically um, is managing the shelf to. 
Wow, that's excellent. And I can imagine only with, with all of this data, how granular strategies can start to become, which is very, very interesting. So let me change gears a little bit and talk about the pandemic a bit more directly. It's been a trying time for everyone on the planet, but also it's offered opportunities. And I'm thinking about your business. It's an interesting one because the trends that you're part of are almost timeless trends. Like they've been, these are things that have been moving forward for years, but I'm just curious if the pandemic has been a, maybe an accelerant uh, in some ways for interest in this area. Yes. I mean, definitely because, you know, one of the things was um, a customer of ours actually caused us my eyes in the store. And that was really, really important. So we did, um, you know, it did accelerate some of our use cases. It also made some of them irrelevant, like what I was telling you about, like the optimization, like on-shelf availability, how do I move the needle from 96 to 98? I mean, that's also a little bit up. So some, it changed, but it definitely, um, you know, made our data, which was very new data at the time, that, you know, maybe the customers and their data teams didn't know how to manage or how to take advantage of, you know, it's always actionable data. That is good, but can I act on it? So it actually made it very clear that it was data that needed and they could act on. So in that sense, it's been um, positive. I mean, I don't want to say pandemic is positive, but, you know, it just made our... Yeah, no, it, it, I think that for businesses important. like yours, especially where I would say you're playing in that omni commerce space, yeah. it's yeah. Um, right, you know, kind of helping companies evaluate their shelf strategy, but also how that impacts that omni commerce element. It's been a big opportunity for sure. And um, <laughs> probably my overused line is that one person that is in every company that is always like, stopped innovation has been silenced <laughs> you know that, that person like no one's listening to that person anymore no <laughs> so. yeah everybody's <laughs> devouring data and trying to understand and in another way it made uh, it accelerated our um proof points because right now what has happened is you know we're a new company and there's some companies that have been around for like 20 years with pos data, but that state became sort of irrelevant Right. Because it does, so that sort of also helped us get our message clear to uh, both retailers and brands. So, you know, Pinar, as you look forward now, I mean, I see 2022 as a big year and it's a, I, I feel like we're living in the future now. I'd just be curious how you see the future of this space evolving. I mean, are we going to see more shifts in the retail landscape? How do you imagine your solution rolling out? Well, I think it's really going to be on two big things. One is omni-channel. And, you know, really where online meets physical is what I get the most excited about. And that's because just like Google was digitizing the world's information, that's what we're trying to do. We're digitizing, we're indexing retail. So when you have that, it's, you know, it's, I think it's going to be feeding both. So we're very excited. Omni-channel is going to be the, you know, a big part. But I think still, you know, our brick and mortar, basic grocery, it's um, still 80% or more. And what our, I'm hoping what our data solution will be um, helping is solve and optimize the supply chain issues so that not only that it's done in a more efficient and maybe business-wise profitable way, but it's also we're less wasteful of world's resources. Yeah. So that we're not, you know, doing irrelevant things or manufacturing products that are not needed and sending them all over the place and not pulling them back and putting them on discounts. So I think with this um, shelf data, there are a lot of advantages to businesses financially, but I really am very proud that it's part of this bigger puzzle of you know optimizing how we as Americans or as you know the world globally using our, um, utilizing our resources, which yeah. now we understand is scarce. Yeah. And um, I think it's a wonderful way of seeing it. It may seem like a very acute or small element, but it actually has a, a huge ripple of impact on every, every area as you're referring to it. 
Pinar, it's been great to hear about uh, Pensa Systems. If someone wanted to learn more about what you guys are up to, where should they find you? Surprise, www.pensasystems.com. And right. also LinkedIn, you can, I, we have our LinkedIn page. I'm also um, quite active at LinkedIn. So those would be the channels. And we're usually at most of the retail shows like grocery talk, shop talk, grocery shop, NRS. So we're everywhere, reach out to us. Excellent. Well, Pinar, thanks so much for being on Uncage today. We've been speaking with Pinar Caprali. She is the co-founder and head of product and data at Pensa Systems. Pensa's technology uses artificial intelligence to enable brands and retailers to reduce stock out and boost revenues by delivering accurate visibility of inventory at a fraction of the cost. It's been amazing to talk to her about what's happening in this retail world that we're living in and how technology is like what Pensa is delivering is changing and moving us forward. So thank you again for being on the show today. And we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.